Welcome to Brainish English Stories. He sat by himself. It wasn't getting dark, it was nighttime, very dark nighttime. He turned off the lamp because he wanted everything around him to be as sad as his own thoughts. Even the small, weak light from the fire in the stove, shining on the nearby objects, bothered him. It reminded him of the happy times he used to have. His deep sadness seemed to freeze all his feelings and ruin his life completely. He didn't seem to think, he only felt. The deep sighs that sometimes came out of his tight lips were the only sign that he was alive. All his shaking, crying, and the sad look on his face were like hidden pain in his heart. Just a few years ago, he was very hopeful and happy. He was in love and later became a very happy husband and father. But now, everything was gone. Death had taken away all his loved ones. One after another, sad things happened to him, hurting his heart badly. He, who was once strong, noble, and had many good things, now sat there like a lifeless statue. He didn't have any purpose, movement, or energy left. Everything good in his life was destroyed, like a big disaster had destroyed his happy home, and he couldn't build anything new from the broken pieces. As he sat there, a sudden bright flame in the fire made him notice the picture of his wife hanging on the wall. It brought back so many memories. He remembered the day when the painting was completed. It was just before they got married. He was so happy looking at it, and his wife asked him, Do you really like it? Will it be beautiful enough for you to remember our love even when we're old? He promised her that she would always be beautiful to him and she sweetly said she wasn't afraid of growing old as long as they were together. But now, he was still young, and he might have to live a long, long time without her. The last time he saw her, she was lying in a coffin, still young and lovely, but pale and still. He, who was still alive and feeling, was the one who couldn't let go of her coffin. With a heavy heart, he gently touched her dark hair on her pale cheek, kissed her cold forehead for the last time, folded her hands, and cried over her. He rested his head on her chest, which had stopped beating with sorrow or happiness. But it was impossible to describe the pain he felt when he had to look away from her beloved face for the last time. Then. Despair took over, and his grief was too deep for tears to ease it. In his sad memories, he was lost for a long time. Eventually, he wiped his tears and said, Oh, my dear love, have you truly left me? Can it be that you're no longer with me? He often thought she was listening to his sorrows, staying by his side and comforting him, but it was just his imagination playing tricks on him. He wondered if she, who loved him so much and always heard his prayers, had heard him calling out to her during the sad, lonely nights. He reached out his arms to hug her, but felt only emptiness. He looked around for her, but there was only silence. If you can hear me, my beloved spirit, please come to me, he pleaded through tears. When his eyes cleared from crying, he looked around and noticed a faint light. At first, he thought it might be the moon shining through the window, but the light grew stronger. It illuminated a corner of the room, and he saw a faint figure dressed in shining clothes, glowing like the stars. When the figure turned towards him, he recognized the features of his lost wife, 
but she looked peaceful and glorious. Her clear eyes sparkled with kindness as she looked at him. The intense sadness he felt was replaced by a strange, peaceful feeling he had never felt before. Please, say something, he asked softly, afraid to disturb the beautiful figure. He held out his hands, pleading, Let me hear your voice, which still echoes in my heart. Have you taken pity on me? Didn't you call for me? answered the soul softly, but with so much love and care that it seemed to give him new strength. Haven't you called for me many times? I couldn't ignore your plea. The pains and troubles of earth don't hurt anymore for those who have become angels, but your sorrow touched me even in my happiness. I couldn't be happy while you were sad. I've been near you, comforting you. I stayed by your side, cooling your fevered brow. And when you seemed a bit comforted, I stayed at your feet, watching your dear face. I was there when you wept over my coffin, wishing you could see me and know I was close. I would have hugged you if I could. I was there when our dear child was dying, too. Our baby called for me, and I had to come. Even though I was in heaven, I came back to answer their call. I glided through the garden paths in the quiet summer nights, and the plants and flowers greeted me with their sweet scents. They knew I came from a better place. Nature spoke to me, asking me to bless its land with my presence. The dark elder tree and the blushing rosebush reminded me of the times we spent together walking arm in arm through the green paths and flowery walks. But I couldn't stay with those memories. I want to watch over our dying child. And when you, my love, were overwhelmed with grief, resting your aching head in sorrow, our child was peaceful in my arms, praying for you as they went to heaven with me. Oh, my dearest, how could you think that death could separate hearts that were once bound by everlasting love? He listened in silent and breathless joy to these words, which sounded like the sweetest music to his delighted ear. When the voice stopped, he reached out his arms towards the dear shadow and said pleadingly, Forgive me, angel of heaven, forgive me. Now I understand that the happiness of heaven is so amazing that nothing on earth can compare to it. Yet, for my sake, you've left that incredible joy for a while to comfort me and heal my heart. Thank you. Blessed spirit, thank you. My path will no longer be dark, and my life won't be lonely anymore. You won't sigh anymore. You won't cry anymore? asked the spirit, smiling brightly. You'll be my guardian angel, blessed spirit, he replied, feeling deeply moved. Thank God, exclaimed the spirit joyfully. It waved its shadowy hand at him, and as it seemed to turn to leave, its airy clothes sparkled brightly for a moment. Then, the sparkle faded more and more until it looked like a distant twinkling star. Then, earthly desires took over his heart again. Oh no, he cried, moving involuntarily towards the fading shadow. Will I never see you again in this world? A holy light shone on the spirit's features, which were barely visible as it replied as if from a distance. Yes, one more time, but just once. When your final hour comes, when the pain of death is over, then you shall tell those who sit by your bed, and who may not believe you, thinking your words are the ramblings of confusion. Then you shall tell them that a messenger from a glorious world stands by your side. 
That messenger will be me. I will come to gently take your last breath, to bring joy to your closing eyes, and after your heart's last beat, to guide your soul to the realms of endless happiness where I await you. He listened and nodded. When he looked up, all was dark and empty. He went to the window, looked out at the gleaming snow, and up at the bright starry sky, and prayed with sadness, but with sincere devotion. He lives to do his duties, to help others, to serve his God. He is never cheerful or lively, but he is calm and content. He enjoys peace and solitude. In winter, he likes to meditate while looking at the serene, cold nature. And in summer, he wanders quietly through his garden's fragrant paths until late at night. He is a lonely traveler on earth, yet not as lonely as people think, for he is often comforted by pleasant dreams, and then he smiles happily as if his visions had been cheered by the presence of a beloved person. If his soul sometimes wishes quietly to enter death's peaceful realm, no one knows. His secret hopes are known only to him who sees into the deepest parts of the human heart.